Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to show you a really cool water tank level gauge from KUS. This is from the marine industry and it's got kind of a retro look, but uh, it's going to be paired with a very accurate tank sending unit that's going to give us a little bit more precision on our water tank level than the KIB micro monitor that we looked at two weeks ago. But um, it's also going to overcome one other weakness of the KIB system in that if there's slime or other debris in the tank, it's not going to be affected by that because it's going to take your tank level reading a different way. Basically, we have a little floater here that has a magnet in it, and it's going to set off different switches that uh, change the resistance that gets sent to the gauge. So I don't know if all that made sense, but basically, the US standard is going to be 240 ohms when the tank is empty to 33 ohms of resistance when the tank is full. And uh, you're going to want to match your, make sure when you order your tank sender and your gauge, they both say 240 to 33 ohms. And that's going to apply on your tank sender, e even if this is twice as long, it's going to be 240 ohms empty to 33 when it's full. And uh, of course you have all the steps in between. And uh, we're gonna do a really cool demo. I think you're gonna like it, showing uh, the gauge reacting as the water level rises. I've got a, a, a really neat demo that we're gonna show you. And we also need to zoom in and take a look. I wanted to keep it simple and just show the two main devices, but they did come with additional items in the box. So we're gonna show you that and uh, then set up our demo. But before we get into that, if you're interested in getting a jump start on your van power system, I've got an excellent resource for you called the Van Power Cheat Sheet. This has a discussion of the different charging sources such as solar, shore power, and alternator power. And uh, truth be told, they all have strengths, but they all have weaknesses. And if you want a well-rounded power system in all scenarios that you find yourself in because you won't always be camping off grid you won't always be at a campground you need kind of a multi-pronged power approach and uh, there's a discussion of how all these charging sources work together to give you a well-rounded power strategy so you've got a good charge no matter where you find yourself out on the road so there's that and there's also a great discussion on different battery chemistries and uh, the batteries of course also have strengths and weaknesses in different scenarios and that discussion is going to help you zero in on what type of battery that you should go with and then lastly i have a really neat diagram that was it originally requested by one of my students he wanted to see the entire power system from your charging sources all the way through to your end device such as your phone charger or your microwave and all the steps in between how that power gets from your solar panel to your microwave and uh, all those connections in between. So it's a really neat diagram that should give you a lot of clarity on how all these systems connect. If you want to uh, grab your free copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, just go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower, or you can click the link below. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at our gauge and our tank sending unit. All right, so let's take a closer look at our gauge. We have a white background with a stainless steel bezel. I did want to mention that they have different color options. You can get a black or white bezel around the outside and then a black or white background. And uh, you want to watch out. Some of them do say fuel because these are also used as fuel gauges. If you do have a black tank, they have one that has a little picture of a toilet for uh, your black tank or holding tank. So that is also available. But uh, pretty neat looking gauge. You could get a white one for your fresh tank and a black one for your uh, gray tank, both with the stainless steel bezel. You could do that or you could get the same ones and just put a label underneath each one to, to say which one it is. But uh, in general, I think it's a pretty cool look. So that's the front of the gauge. As far as the body of it, you have a lock ring so that you can lock on to different thicknesses of paneling. You want to be careful and drill a really tight hole. It's, uh, I believe, 52 millimeter or 2 and 1 16th inches. If you drill too big a hole, it'll just pull through the paneling. You don't have a real big lip here on the bezel. But uh, that is how you'd attach it to the paneling. And then you're going to have a little wiring harness that comes with it. We've got a lock uh, ring there or a, a casing that holds the wires in place. 
and they're just going to plug in. Let me pull them apart. It's going to plug into the back of the unit there, and it's got a little seal to keep any water out. So we'll get that back in there and uh, lock it in place. But as far as the wires, uh, don't worry, you are going to have some written instructions that come with it. You've got a wiring diagram, so you don't have to remember all that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the wires are real quick. So the red is battery positive, so that's a pretty common color for 12 volt positive. The blue is going to be battery negative, so this will attach to your fuse panel to the negative side. The black is going to be signal and um, that is going to connect to the tank sender wire to uh, read, take a reading and tell how many ohms based on uh, how much water is in the tank. So those are kind of your main wires, the uh, red, blue, and black. The orange and yellow are going to control the backlights. So these will light up and uh, you have a yellow backlight and then the orange wire, it's more of a red. It's supposed to be an orange backlight, but it's, it's kind of a reddish color. So you can optionally connect these or not connect these, but basically these will allow you to see the gauge at night. It may add to kind of the retro cool look of the gauge <laughs> to have those backlights. So those are the wires. Let's move on to the sending unit. You've already kind of seen the general construction of this, but this one is a lot simpler. It's just got the two wires. So the blue is going to be 12 volt negative again. It's going to attach to the uh, system negative. And the brown in this case is our signal wire. Now this is a different brand than KUS. I needed the 7.5 inch variety to fit the tank that I have. Um, and so I ended up having to get a different brand that was available in stock. And so the, the signal wire is brown. I believe with the KUS sending units, you're going to have a black signal and it's going to match the uh, black signal of the gauge. But in general, these are both 240 to 33 ohm units, so they will talk to each other. We're just going to connect the black from the gauge to the brown from the sending unit. And this stuff's pretty straightforward. If you just look at the, um, look at the paperwork, you'll, uh, it'll tell you which wire is which, and uh, you know you have to connect the two signal wires together there. To get a reading. So that is the sending unit. Now as far as mounting this to the tank, you're going to want to drill a big enough hole to get this uh, floater through the, through the tank and that's going to end up being an inch and a half hole saw or step bit. And as far as the seal, you're going to have a SAE five hole pattern seal that's going to match up with the five holes there. These are not uh, equally spaced holes and it's so that you can um, basically rotate. It forces you to rotate equipment to a certain orientation. Um, and so you wanna make sure that we rotate the seal to match up with the holes from the sending unit. And then it's also gonna come with uh, five little screws to mount this to the top of the tank. So that's the gist of the gauge in the sending unit. At this point, let's go ahead and wire these together and uh, we'll do a quick demo. All right, fasten your seat belts. We're gonna do a quick demo of the wires before we actually use water and uh, take a reading. I just wanted to show you how this is wired together. You can see at its core, we have a positive line going back to system positive and a negative line going back to system negative. So that would probably go to your fuse panel. I would say use a two or three amp ATC fuse to tie in these lines. And basically those two wires are gonna power up this whole system that we have here. You'll see that uh, the red coming in, it runs through this switch, and that's because these take about two watts. And uh, it's not a big load, but if your van sits there for a month, you could come back and wonder why your battery's drained. Stuff like this can drain your battery over a long period of time. So generally, you're gonna put a switch in this, and then that red positive is going to connect to the red positive here to power up the gauge. So that is uh, 12 volt positive coming in. You'll see this additional wire though. If you recall from a minute ago, I mentioned that the yellow and the orange are the backlights. So what I did, I kind of used the lazy man's method here 
to pick up 12 volt positive on that yellow backlight, I just hopped it into our butt splice to pick up 12 volt positive. So when we turn this switch on, it's going to send power down the red to power up the gauge itself. And it's going to send power down the yellow to turn on the backlight. So both of those will be powered on when we hit that switch. Now, when it comes to the negatives, the uh, blue was negative from the gauge and blue is negative from the sender. And uh, so what I did is I just connected to the blue here at the sender, sent that over to this butt splice. And then the blue here, I tied into that butt splice as well to send it back with one line. So again, you could run a, a line, a blue line all the way from the sender, all the way to system negative and a blue from the gauge all the way to system negative. But instead of running two wires, you can just jumper them together here at the gauge and send that one wire back. So that's what I did with that. And then pretty straightforward, the signal wire to take a reading, the black from the gauge connects to the brown from the sending unit and uh, just butt splice those together as well. You'll notice that the orange was left out so for our initial demo, I'm going to use the yellow backlight. If I had connected the orange into that butt splice, we would have an orange or a red backlight. <clears throat> like I said before, it, it's supposed to be orange, but it looks more red to me. But uh, I chose the other backlight, and uh, maybe we can demo this light a little bit later. But that is the general wiring. And uh, what we're going to do now is get a pitcher of water and uh, take a reading. All right, so we've got the moment of truth. I'm going to put the sender into the pitcher here and we'll turn on our gauge. You can see it pop up just a little bit there. And now I'm going to fill this with water and I want you to keep an eye on the gauge and watch it move. All right, so that's how it works. And the instant replay, let's watch that in reverse as your tank empties, this is what it's gonna look like. So here it is with that yellow backlight at night. And here's the red backlight, which we're going to get if we connect the orange wire instead of the yellow wire. I wanted to wrap up by showing how to install the tank sender in our tank. And what I'm going to do is install it right in the center. You can see I've got some other probes here from the KIB micromonitor system. We covered that a couple of weeks ago. This is kind of my demonstration tank. But you can see the logic that we're going to follow. These probes are in the center of the tank. We're also going to put our tank center in the center of the tank. And that is because if your vehicle is on a slope and the water is sloshing around in there, if you put the uh, tank reader on one end or the other, it can give you a false reading that your tank's either full or empty, depending on which end it's on. Uh, but if you put it in the center, that water is just going to pivot around it and you'll get that accurate reading. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and we'll start drilling into our tank. All right, here we go. Got a uh, center mark here. Just gonna bring in our inch and a half hole saw. And uh, luckily we caught the uh, plastic piece We'll just brush away these shavings. What you can do after doing all this drilling is you can put water in the tank and then just pour it out and pour it out through the larger spout and a lot of those shavings, any shavings that get inside, they'll come out through the spout. And that's gonna go down in there. We'll put in two screws to kind of lock our star pattern in position and then uh, we'll drill the other holes and put those other screws. So I guess I'm saying kind of take your time on 
drilling this and don't drill all five of them because if you drill all five of them before putting any screws in there, they probably won't line up when you go to get the screws because there's, there's not a whole lot of tolerance there for uh, wiggling. So I have a uh, 532 bit. Do our main hole. That pilot hole honestly is a little bit larger than I would have thought. And that's why it's good to test. Um, so we'll kind of don't tighten it too much because it is just an ABS plastic tank. We'll do this other hole across the way. And you can see I bumped it just now and that would make our, if we drilled all five holes at one time, that would make our holes off. But uh, I'm able to pivot it back to where that hole was. And so now We'll put the second screw and that will lock the plate and the whole pattern in place. And I will say on the length of the unit, I mentioned earlier that it's 7.5 inches and that's because I measured this tank and um, the Tank sender manufacturer recommends that you leave one inch at the bottom of the tank between the bottom of the sender and the bottom of the tank. They want you to have one inch in there. Uh, honestly, it seems like overkill to me, so I left about a half an inch, but um, that's kind of up to you. You can read the instructions, but uh, you're going to leave a little gap there be below the sender so it doesn't hit the bottom of the tank. So now that we have two screws, it's, uh, it's locked in place, and I'm going to come back and drill our final three holes. All right, so we'll take these out and throw the seal in there. All right, we've got it lined up there with the hole pattern. Kind of get that seal aligned with this Get everything shifted into place. And uh, I'm tempted to use my power drill to drive these screws in, but because we're dealing with pretty weak plastic, I would just do this by hand. I know it's a little tedious, but that's going to keep you out of trouble and keep us from stripping out the uh, screws. And they want you to do a crisscross pattern when you install the screws. So don't just go around the circle, but uh, hop from one side to the other, kind of a star pattern. All right, we've got the tank sender installed. To be honest, this plastic is a little bit thin for my liking. Some of the white tanks, I believe the walls of them are 3 16 plastic. So you're going to have a little bit more material for these screws to grip, but it's not a high stress situation. So it should be fine in this tank or any other tank. Uh, just don't run those screws in with a power drill, as I mentioned, because you may strip out that plastic. But that is how you install a tank sender and connect it to a KUS gauge. I hope this was informative. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're interested in getting a jump start on your van power system, you got to take a look at my van power cheat sheet. Click below to download your free copy and get a jump start on your power system today. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.